we're going to jump right back into the content library and we're going to try and do a deep dive on everything that you can do in the content library. Um, so 100% of the process here. The first thing I want to start on is just going through uploading assets. Most of you at this point have probably done this a couple of times, but we're going to make note of a couple of caveats, a couple of important things to look at. Uh, so first, big upload assets button, hard to miss, upper left hand corner. Once you select that, it'll give you the option to choose files from your local computer. So in this case, we have a couple of these LRAP files that we haven't uploaded into the system. We're going to select those files and hit open. You'll see each of the files that you've selected show up on the left hand side. You'll have a note at the bottom of the screen that actually tells you the supported file types. This is a kind of an important uh, detail that I don't think we've covered uh, in other trainings before, but the supported file types for static graphics are PNGs, with transparency or without, um, JPEG files, uh, specifically non-progressive JPEGs um, with an RGB color space. So if you, if you were to upload a progressive JPEG, the color space would not render correctly. The same thing if you were to export a CMYK formatted um, JPEG, the same thing would be an issue. Uh, and for video files, MPEG, uh, MPEG-TS, M2TS, and MP4 files are all supported. Um, those are all really just containers. The encoding of the file is the thing that matters. And inside an MP4 or an MPEG file, it, typically we would expect it to be encoded as an H.264 or H.265 file. H.264 would be for any um, 1080p content. Anything that's 4K, we'd expect in uh, H.265. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see all of the tags that have been previously created through your entire venue. Um, you can either pre-create a tag before you upload your content, or you can create your tag in real time as you're doing the upload. So in this case, we'll create a new tag. Gives us a space to enter a name. We're going to call this demo tag. And when we hit enter, it gets added to our list below. Um, we can see it in front of us, but this list is a little bit long. So why don't we try and sort using the search function? If I search demo, it shows the two that are pertinent. This allows us to quickly sort through the tags that apply to us. The more content and the more tags that you use, the more useful the search function ultimately becomes. We can click it to select it. We can actually select multiple tags for the content, but it is worth noting that any tag that you select has to apply to all the content that you're uploading now. So if you wanted to split this between two separate tags, you'd have to upload it as two separate groups of content. The tags will turn green once selected. If we hit continue, you'll get a status bar indicating the, set, the, the actual upload progress. And once it completes, those assets will be added into your media library in the center. So in this case, we're just going to confirm by scrolling down to our tags. We'll hit our demo tag, and we see these four pieces of content. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that when you select content via tag, you actually have fewer details in your detail view than you do from the regular content library. Um, this is all defaulted. There's no way that you can modify the configuration for this. But um, just as a note, you will only see the title and type. Um, although, you can still go to the preview view and get a thumbnail of that piece of content. So in this view, we can also select an individual piece of content and see all of its details in the preview pane at the right. So most of the same information that you would see in the detailed view, um, selecting it uh, from above in the library, you can see through the tag, clicking on the piece of content directly. Um, in fact, you'll notice here, you can actually even play that video as a preview right in your browser. Another note, you can right click on a piece of content selected with a detail view actually um, up through the actual library itself. So if we go back to videos, we do a search for Frost, which is the new piece of content that we uploaded, and we right click. You'll note that we actually have the ability to move this piece of content into a workspace. And we'll take a look at the workspaces in a couple of seconds. Um, delete that piece of content or preview it. This is also a really useful way for you to be able to download content that you've already uploaded. Let's say, for example, you had something that was a couple of years old, you weren't sure what, if, the, uh, if you have an archival copy of it, you can pull it directly out of Cisco Vision once you're in the preview with a right click and the save video as. 
and that will download right to your local desktop. In the same original format that it was uploaded. Yes, uh, it's going to it'll it'll save as a, a whatever you want to name the file. So you know if it's frostlwrap.mp4, if we go to save as, you'll notice it'll say all files. So I would have to type uh, what was the file frostlwrap.mp4. Frost lwrap dot mp4. Once I go to save it, it actually sees that, that file is already there because I uploaded it from my computer. But um, yes, 100% the same format. Uh, but because it, it defaults to giving you no file extension when you download the file, it'll just be download. Period. That's just the default name for when you go to grab it. So just make sure that you rename it and you give it the appropriate file extension when you pull that piece of content off. So a couple of other things that are really useful. Um, once you have a piece of content selected, it does open a preview screen on the right-hand side. You can hit this Edit button right here to make some modifications. So this is how you would add a tag, for example, to a piece of content that's already here. So down where the two tags are already placed, there's a drop-down. The drop down will let you, let's say, select. You could hit plus after that's selected. And it'll just continuously allow you to add additional tags. You can do the same thing to delete them. Just hit the minus buttons. Same thing. Um, those changes will not take until you save. So you can hit the save button to commit them. Uh, additionally, you can create rules around when a piece of content is valid or not. So if you know that a piece of content is going to have an effective start date, an effective stop date, so for example, if you know that an asset goes into rotation on April 15th and comes out of rotation on April 30th, you can build those uh, into the actual piece of content itself and then restrict playback only during the time when that piece of content is valid. That does have to be done per uh, piece of content, and it does have to be done manually through this process for every piece that you want to assign those rules to. It can be a little bit tedious, but it can be done too. Um, depends on what your content strategy looks like for wherever you're running a piece of content. Um, but that option is here. And again, once you have those effective rules in place, they're only a reference unless you select restrict playback. So if you have If you have that restrict playback button pressed, it will skip that piece of content. Okay, so it won't be black or anything like that. It just It'll just skip it. Answer. Correct. Uh, it treats it as invalid, basically. Um, and then again, any changes that you put here for the start um, date and time and stop date and time, much like with changes to the tags, you have to hit the save button for them to take. And then all that information will be vi um, viewable for that piece of content. Uh, so again, on the library itself, uh, you can select and sort by the type of asset, whether it's a static graphic under images, whether it's motion graphics and video under videos. Um, widgets, if you've created any, will show up under the widgets tab. And channels, it, this actually will show you an object for every single channel that was defined in the control panel. They will all show up here as well. External content, by the way, you can add an asset that is uh, just a reference to an external URL. So if there's a JPEG that's hosted on a web server somewhere, you can do that here. Um, the only thing that's worth noting is that with external content, the same thing with a URL, um, that gets pulled every time the DMP subscribes to it. So from a bandwidth perspective, if you point to a really big video, just be aware that every DMP that points to it is getting a unicast copy of it. That can be a big bandwidth hog. Um, it gets to, if you use it a lot, it can be something to try and keep an eye out for. Um, it can result in performance issues if you apply it all over the place with really big pieces of content.